everyone. Um, I'm Jesse Peshman, and I'm going to be talking very quickly about Utah political redistricting. In 2018, the voters of Utah voted to have an independent commission draw political district boundaries, so the boundaries of who represents us. Um, due to complicated uh, legal law, uh, I can't really get into why that didn't immediately go, like the independent district maps wouldn't immediately go into effect. They had to go still be approved by the state legislature and they could take it into account or they couldn't. But it was a new thing, it was exciting um, to try and change how things are done in Utah. Um, for those not familiar with Utah, it's a pretty um, conservative state in the most of the areas. Salt Lake City um, is more of the liberal pocket, so there's some geographical tension there. Um, the the the, uh, the statute that was passed uh, had different um, rules to have the independent commission follow. Um, and I also forgot to say, the reason I was involved is there was a call for GIS volunteers uh, to come and sit there and kind of help do the GIS. They wanted someone uh, independent from the independent commission to, and who knew how to draw polygons. Um, help with that. So that, that's kind of how I was involved. It was a very interesting experience um, in the summer of 2022, I believe, um, or 2021. So one of them was considering previous boundaries. So you can see over the last three decades, uh, Utah went from three political, this is Cong Congress, three districts to four in 2012. It also went from Salt Lake City, Salt Lake County, having its own district to a move towards splitting uh, rural and urban. Um, the, the independent commission, uh, they drew congressional districts, but then also local districts for school board and state and house representatives. Um, there was a lot of geographical rules. So one of them was that had con uh, districts had to be contiguous and it had to be reasonably compact. You can have two separate things and it couldn't be long and skinny. Kind of had to make sense that way. Uh, they were also supposed to consider uh, existing boundaries. So that could be natural boundaries, rivers, um, city boundaries, roads, you know, don't just go draw boundaries where you want. So that, that was another thing uh, that us GS volunteers had different layers up to kind of help guide. And then they were also supposed to consider existing communities of interest. This is the Utah part of the Navajo Nation. So they were supposed to, if they could, keep these intact and not split it in half. Um, they also weren't supposed to favor um, one group or another. The whole point was to be independent, right? Um, these are the three maps that the Independent Commission came up with. Um, and you can see there's different, uh, that's the, the, the small polygons. Um, if you're not familiar with Utah, that's where most of the population is so along the Wasatch Front here in Salt Lake City and north and south. Um, so the first two maps had that. The last map was more of that traditional urban rural split that has been dominating Utah politics for the last two decades. Um, and this is what the Utah legislature did in the end. Uh, they, they they didn't take into account any of the um, maps that the Independent Commission did, but uh, I think all of us involved thought it was a good exercise um, and it was a really cool GIS exercise. Uh, so it's really cool. I encourage you to look up um, political redistricting and gerrymandering and how geography plays into it. So just to end on this map, if you're curious about in general how uh, districts are, are um, mapped, uh, it depends on where you are. Um, a lot of state legislatures have uh, the authority um, to, to decide the uh, boundaries for federal, but there's also the pockets where there is an independent redistricting commission and they have a lot of um, algorithms to design those fairly. So that's my talk. Uh, for Jesse, uh, I'm curious to know your, uh, if you have any advice on like when you're when you're working with a big group of people and you're trying mm -hmm. to present, you know, a bunch of different GIS related data, is there a like a tech stack that you use for that that is a clean, uh, presentable way to do that? Yeah, that's a really good question. We use two different platforms. Um, this was a couple years ago. Cause I can't remember the name. One of them was open source, and the other one was Esri. And so me and the other volunteers actually worked together to preload. Um, data sets, which was really useful because we were all working in different rooms, I think about three days a week. Um, so we were we were sharing, I guess, like best practices. And then 
my kind of personal strategy was to try and listen as much as I could and kind of like preempt like what they might be thinking. And then I would just kind of, if it wasn't, I, I could tell if I was like pulling up a layer, kind of like tr moving to do something. And they were kind of like, wait, what are you doing? You know, it, you really had to like watch and listen, which was new for me. But that's a really good question. It was definitely a very unique experience because we had two people in the room with one volunteer and they would discuss things um, and, the, and you kind of, and you had to respond to what they were doing and then like the stats would come up. It was really interesting, but that's a good question.